Next tonight, why is football the final frontier when it comes to people being able to say they're gay in public? Only one single professional player has come out as being gay. Next week, it'll be 10 years since the untimely death of Justin Fashionu. And as Tony Rowe's been discovering, it may well be that what happened to Justin is still having repercussions today. It's the national game, but it's a game which has a bad reputation for tolerance. Football started to tackle racism when black players became stars. But why is being gay a taboo on the football field? Ryan, Fashionu. Oh, oh, what a goal! Why is Justin Fashionu still the only professional footballer in the world to admit he was gay? Statistically, it cannot be that the footballing profession is out of sync with the rest of the world. Isn't it extraordinary that all these years later, still, he's the first and only? Surely there must be more gay footballers out there playing professional football. Well, I actually don't believe that, Bob. I actually don't believe there is any gay footballers. You know, you look at football, and realistically, it's not a game that gay people want to be in. But is football really like Eric Hall says? Well, this is actually a gay football match between teams from Nottingham and London. They're in the Gay Friendly Football League. Yes! 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 I mean, a number of our players do, do actually play in straight teams. If you're a good player, I think you get by. If you're an average player and you, know, you struggle, um, then you don't really get the support that, that we create. I mean, that, that's partly what our ethos is about. We've all been in the same boat, um, where we've been sort of you know, isolated at some stage. It was hard to be yourself when you were with you know, loads of straight lads, uh, but like I said, it's, this is part of the team where you can just be you and you're not going to be criticised for it. Football's a social thing, it's also entertainment and you only have to go back to the 70s to see how attitudes have changed. Good touch by Samos, crossed by Weller, and a beautiful header by Birchinall. When Alan Birchinall kissed Tony Curry on the lips for a laugh, there was outrage, questions in Parliament and threats. I had an 18-year career, over 500 games. Nobody remembers that, all they remember basically is that photograph got some letters from some political people saying, you know, how, what a disgrace we were to the British nation and et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, I look back on it now and it's almost laughable. So imagine what it was like for Justin Fashionu at the end of that decade. When he signed for Norwich as a teenager, he was also different because he was black. The thing that spurs me on is the fact that I am playing for black people who maybe have not had as good a life as I've had, who have been living in the ghettos. Fashion -o. Oh, oh, what a goal! Oh, that's a magnificent goal! As the crowd applaud, surely one of the... Justin, on behalf of Match of the Day, my very great pleasure to present you with this marvellous silver salver for scoring the goal of the season. Thank you. On the strength of that goal, he became the first million pound black player and moved to Brian Clough's Nottingham Forest. When Justin transferred to Nottingham Forest from a million pounds, uh, he was just so excited, so happy, so full of optimism about his future career. Here's Wallace and here's Fashionu. Fashionu wants it right side and he gets it. He failed at Forest. His manager got to hear about Justin's private life. Fashnu was a regular at a gay bar. From the many private personal conversations I had with Justin, it's very clear that Brian Clough's homophobia, the constant ribbing and ridiculing, did have a very damaging psychological effect upon him. At first, Justin laughed it off. But after this went on for weeks and months, it really did begin to get to him. Justin turned to God, but struggled to make religion fit in with his sexuality. His saviour was Notts County, who rescued him from Forest. Of course, we're talking about Notts County then being uh, a first division club, a club at the top flight uh, of English football. 
so he came, still in the first division, but only for £150,000, to see if he could resurrect his career. He did exceptionally well for us. He got about one goal in three, which in a team as low down the league as we were, was very, very good. But Justin Fashnu brought a reputation with him too. To some he seemed fearful of the press bench, yet at the same time he courted publicity. Of course there is, uh, or certainly was, in the world of football, a very homophobic atmosphere. Uh, and so for a gay player to be in that midst, whether he'd come out openly or not by then, or was still the subject of rumour, it was a, a misfit, really. Injury stopped his top flight career early. Out of the limelight in football, he made the headlines in another way. Fearing he was about to be outed by a Sunday paper, he and his agent sold the son the story that he was gay. I think I did the right thing, that's a fact. The boy was very mixed up and did the right thing. That ain't the money, the money's handy for him, of course it's handy. But we're doing it because we want to take the terrible, terrible, you know, CD exclusive away from the Sunday papers. The story caused upset with family and friends. He made more outrageous and, as it turned out, made up claims about relationships with politicians before going to America to train others to play football. While he was there, he became embroiled in an accusation of a sexual assault on another man. He came home. He went to a monastery in Leicestershire, to a sauna in London's East End, to a lock-up garage where he hanged himself. Just hours before he died, witnesses say that he was in a very chirpy, happy, vibrant mood. Not the kind of mood that you'd associate with someone who was about to kill themselves. You know, that's a curiosity which has never been explained. He loved life. He loved champagne. He loved women. He liked men. He liked everything. He was a very happy, good-looking, funny guy. Great sense of humour. He was the last person you would think would actually want to top himself to finish it off. I just never detected anything in him that would suggest that. It was ten years ago. How has football moved on? Well, the Gay Friendly League has Football Association backing and some of the players here are working with clubs to back a campaign to drive homophobia out of grounds. It would be nice to be able to get to the stage where if these people, it wouldn't be an issue. Neither in the changing rooms, nor on the terraces, nor on the pitch. If you're a gay in, in the media world or the showbiz type world, you'll be a hairdresser, you'll be a, 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 you'll be a cameraman, I'm sorry cameraman, you'll be a presenter, I'm sorry Mr. Presenter, but you will want to be a footballer. It's not a, a world, you know, attracts gay people. The gay men and women do play football, they do enjoy it, and there's no reason why they can't go to grassroots level and in the professional level. What happened to Justin Fashnu, though, hardly encourages others in sport, or football in particular, to come out. I think the greatest tragedy of Justin Fashnu is that he is remembered for two things and not for his talent. I think he's remembered for his gayness and the fact that he took his own life. That's part of the tragedy. He was the first openly gay footballer the first and only, the first and only prominent black person in public life to come out as gay. You know, those were real milestones. The tragic story of Justin Fashionu. And if you want to find out more, then go to bbc.co.uk slash inside out and click on East Midlands.